So as part of what we're going to do here, we are just going to have a look at um, a couple different types of organic reactions, just really an introduction. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at some of the introductory organic reactions uh, in the form of this practice quiz, which has um, a few um, different types, and it will take you through kind of what you have to be able to do at this point. So the first reaction, um, the first question, sorry, has reactions where you have to complete. So there's really two things you have to do. Um, you have to obviously recognize that it is an addition reaction, but second of all, you have to determine what the products will be. So the big thing this first question is doing is Markovnikov's rule. Remembering that we want to add to the more substituted carbon. So every addition reaction that we do, um, we look at the molecule and determine if it's symmetrical or asymmetrical. So if I cut along that bond, those are different sides, so this is asymmetrical. Br2 is symmetrical. Anytime that, that one of the reactants is symmetrical, then we will only have one product, so we draw that out without the double bond. We put our fluorine on it. Bromine will add across the double bond. It won't, matter, it won't matter which one's where. And that would be our product. So again, we're just doing addition reactions. For this one, we see an asymmetric product, a reactant, sorry, and another asymmetric reactant. So we have asymmetric and asymmetric. That tells me I have two products. So the hydrogen can add here and the chlorine there or vice versa. So I'm going to draw these out the same way I did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So just drawing this out. So the double bond was here. So one product will have the double bond opened up with a hydrogen on this one and a chlorine on that one. We also will see 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3 the chlorine and a hydrogen. Um, and these would be different products. So we then look at the types of carbons we have on the bond. So this is a secondary carbon and this is also a secondary carbon. I'm just going to use a little degree sign to show that. So the both of these carbons are equally substituted. So this will be 50-50. Um, each product will make roughly half of the mixture. But remember, if one of the carbons is more substituted, so if one of these had been a tertiary carbon, um, that product would have been the major product. So you move to C, it's symmetrical, and this is asymmetrical. With one being symmetrical, we know we only have one product, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Don't draw the double bond. Hydrogen here, iodine there. Remember, just open up the double bond and add the H and the I. Um, because one is symmetrical, we only have one product, and that one is it. So this addition reaction is a little bit trickier because, um, yeah, this is symmetrical and this is symmetrical. So you're definitely only get, going to get one product, but we have to recognize this molecule as something called benzene. And remember, we also draw benzene like this. So when benzene is added, we use a catalyst. And all that catalyst will be able to do is it will still be benzene, or I could use the alternating bonds, and it will add one of whatever I'm adding and then it will give us a second product with the other one. So remember that each of these vertices have a hydrogen on them. So one chlorine takes one away, the other chlorine takes its place. So basically that is the only thing that will happen 
um, with benzene. Um, you could use bromine here, but you would just have a BR, the same effect. So for this reaction, uh, number two, there's actually two parts to it. So firstly, we have to um, determine what the actual formula of this is, because when we do combustion reactions, um, you know, producing a yellow flame, really we just are gonna, going to use molecular equations. So we're going to draw 2-methylbutane. Uh, One, two, three, butane is four. And at number two, we have a methyl group. I'm just drawing this out, and then H3, H1, 2, 3, 4, 2, and 3. The first thing I did is just draw it out. And what that's going to allow me to do is determine the molecular formula. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons, so C5. Now, as soon as I see that I have 5 carbons, I know how many hydrogens I have because it's an alkane. So the formula for hydrogen would be two times the number of carbons plus two, so H12. Or if you really want, you can just count them. Three plus three plus three is nine. 10, 11, 12. So a yellow flame means incomplete. So to draw a combustion reaction, C5H12 plus O2, leave a little room to balance, going to CO2 plus H2O. So regardless if it is complete or incomplete, that is always going to be there. Because it's a yellow flame, we also are going to have CO plus just carbon. So this is your soot. This is carbon monoxide, which of course is dangerous, water vapor and carbon dioxide. Um, you just need to go through and balance it, and I don't think that balancing chemical equations is really the focus of what you, we need to review here. So a possible solution would be 5, 2, sorry, 5, 2, and 6, and 2 carbons with only one CO2. So again, there's going to be multiple solutions to that balancing, and that's just one of them. So for the next one, we have a sample of methyl octane. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two methyl octane. Now, just out of the interest of just completing this, I'm going to but we know once again that if we count up our carbons one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, C nine, and H would be two times nine plus two, so H twenty. So C9H20 plus oxygen. It's a blue flame, so it's complete combustion. It would be CO2 plus H2O. So again, one possible solution would be 10, 9, and 14. Oh, sorry, there is only one possible solution for complete combustion. And that's all you're really going to do for combustion reactions. So for this next part, all we're going to do is identify our reactions. So we've done addition, elimination, subtraction, and combustion um, in a lot of detail. And then we have these other two reactions that we've done as well, uh, condensation and hydrolysis, and they're the opposite of each other. Um, hydrolysis has water as a reactant, condensation has water as a product. Um, when you start to see the two of them, we'll, we'll look at one, a couple here in a second, um, just as a review, is that condensation reactions will put uh, two small things together. 
and hydrolysis will actually split one big molecule into two smaller ones. So they could actually be the opposite of each other. So we'll have a look at that in a second. So all we're going to do when we go to do these molecules is try and figure out exactly what's happening and then put a name on the type of reaction. So we have an alcohol and iodide, and I've just changed these to match what we've done, the uh, guide that you were, was on the bulletin board in our classroom. Um, notice that the alcohol and the iodide have switched, so that is a substitution. Look at this reaction. The key would be, look at the differences. A double bond exists here, but not here. Going from a single to a double bond is an elimination. Going to this one here, you look through, we have fluorine on this one, but it's not here. Once again, look, double bond is appearing. Creating a double bond is an elimination reaction. Then we look at letter D. And letter D has water as a reactant. And it has one big molecule going into two. So this is called a hydrolysis. Mentioned it um, a few times. So basically all a hydrolysis reaction is, is it's the reverse of the one we did in the lab when we made aspirin. Um, in the aspirin lab we did a condensation and in the reverse one we have done hydrolysis. So um, just note that we go from a bigger molecule to two small ones. And water will be a reactant. Um, in this one, there's no structure. Oxygen is a reactant. And we have four products, carbon monoxide and soot. This is incomplete combustion. So then what we have here is, notice we have two reactants that are relatively big. This is exactly what you've done in the lab when we made aspirin. Two small things coming together, and there's our ester. But two small things coming together, that is a condensation. So we have two small um, forming a larger one, ultimately an ester and you have water being a product, that's condensation. And remember we talked about um, condensation with regards to showers and what the difference is between condensation and hydrolysis. Hydrolysis has water as a reactant and it divides the molecule. Condensation puts molecules together, making bigger ones. It has water as a product. So, the next thing that we have here is just predicting what we actually will see in reaction types. So look at the molecule. That is the absolute biggest thing um, and find out what's happening. This is not benzene, by the way. You have an OH and a chloride. So what you start to do is you start to have a look at what do you have that does that. Where do I go from an alcohol and a chloride? So I'm going to bring this little sheet together. So I have an alcohol and hydrogen chloride. And it looks like it's going to be a substitution reaction. So this is substitution. Just find the one that matches. Draw my cyclohexane. And put chlorine on it. And now HOH or obviously H2O would also be useful.
So now I have a CL here. And we have um, an OH being added. So as we look at this, um, if this is high T and you use a nonpolar solvent for sure, you will end up with an elimination reaction. So remember, this is the one where we have alcohols doing two possible things based on the um, condition. And we create just this bond collapsing and creating a double bond right there. Um, if that is not there, we also could have had a substitution where OH was just created um, and the chloride ion comes off. So really both of those are acceptable. It's all the biggest difference there is conditions on what you actually see. So the last part here is we have just a practice naming. Um, we've gone through a lot of these different compounds, so we need to make sure that we um, recognize what the group is. So OH is an alcohol. So name your parent chain. One, two, three, four. It's butane. So we write butanol, and the alcohol is on position two. This one's one, two, three, four, five. I have a methyl group on four. I have alcohol groups on two and three. Pentanodiol. For this one, we have a cyclic compound with an alcohol on it. So, 2-methyl. Remember that the 1 always goes on the alcohol. Don't forget your cyclo. We don't need a number for the alcohol simply because that it def would be the definition of 1. Two chloro. Hexane. These are your alkyl halides. Um, we have a branch here. One, two, three, four, five. So bromine first. So three bromo. Two iodo. 4 methyl pentane. This is one newer one. Um, remember, we have a, an, an oxygen connecting both of them, so this is an ether. So name your longer chain first 1, 2, 3, 4. And then name your other chain. So there's 1 and 2. So this is. Um, the alkyl group, the smaller one, is ethoxy, O-X-Y. It's attached to carbon 1 on the long chain, butane, or ethyl butyl ether would also be acceptable. So butyl ethyl ether. This um, is the smaller of the two. Um, if you look at your cheat sheet, this will be isopropyl. 
Um, I probably would not use that on the quiz because we haven't really used that a lot, but it is isopropyl. So here's my longest chain, one, two, three, four, with an ether, name your longest chain, which is butane. Tell me what number you've attached the oxygen to. Isopropoxy. This one we have an amine. One, two, three, four. So two butane, drop the E. And I am E. Name the following structures. So name our biggest one as our parent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we name our longest chain, which is a seven. So this is heptane, but you change it to amine. The amine is attached to position 3. I have a methyl and an ethyl group on it, so I'll write N ethyl, N because it's attached to the nitrogen, N methyl. This is an aldehyde. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The methyl group at three. We don't need a number for aldehydes because it has to be at the end. So three methyl pentanal. So draw the following structures. Um, drawing usually is easier because when you go to draw, you're going to end up uh, controlling the numbering. So pentanol is one, two, three, four, five. The alcohol is on number one. The methyl group, methyl group is on number three. Fill in your groups. Identify your longest chain. So butane, one, two, three, four. The oxygen is hooked up to number two, and it's an ethyl group. Fill it in. Again, just practice the naming. So three methyl pentanyl, so pent means five, so one, two, three, four, five, write your root out. You know that you have, because it's an aldehyde, you're at the end. One, two, three, put your methyl group on. Two, three, four, H2, H, H2, H3. Three decanone, so this is a ketone. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Put your ketone group. Fill it in. With with hydrogens. Three methyl butanoic acid, so butanoic is four. One, two, three, four. It's got to be at the end of the acid group, so put your double bond in your OH. One, two, three. One, two, three. Fill in your hydrogens. NN dimethyl butanine. So, two, three, four, the but there's an amine at, so nitrogen at number one, it's dimethyl on the nitrogen, so N is one methyl, N is the other.
fill in your hydrogens and you are done. So the two biggest things um, that we probably need to remind ourselves with uh, here is just your condensation and your hydrolysis are two types of reactions we've done and a little bit in passing um, so it's good to take a second here just to review them um, a hydrolysis reaction is going to have um, water as a reactant and a condensation is going to have water as a product. So the second thing that we're going to see with hydrolysis um, reactions is with hydrolysis reactions, you're going to see basically a molecule being split apart. And in a condensation, you're going to see it put together. This was what we did in aspir the aspirin lab. So just so we are clear, um, in a condensation reaction, frequently you have an alcohol plus a carboxylic acid and this would form as it did in the lab an ester um, and just remember exactly what an ester is um, as we go through this Um, it's just anytime you have this group. So um, here's an example of an ester from the, the, um, the quiz. An oxygen in a group, two small ones making a big one. And then an example of a hydrolysis is um, one bigger mo molecule. Once again, there's your ester breaking up into two other ones, an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. So it's just the reverse. Condensation is what we did in lab, um, in lab number 10. Hydrolysis is the reverse of that. Um, putting two small things together, breaking two things apart.